How's it going, mate? Good, you? Good. You had a haircut. Yeah. I'm losing it anyway, so I might as well get rid of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Looks very sharp. Thank you. Yeah. So does yours. Thanks. Thanks. I'm always getting a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> so how you been? I noticed the... Huh? How you been? Great. Been real good. Got to, uh, got to see uh, Chris and Victoria, and that's just... They're uh, tremendous people. <laughs> Aren't they? Just appreciate. I, I pre truly appreciated seeing them. Yeah. It was. Uh, it's fulfilling. Yeah. So you had a good time. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful time. How long were they there for? Uh, the. They showed up. Just before Sabbath, yeah, and, and then they'll be here until um, the third day. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. So, did you have you had your meeting yet? That was last night. Oh, last night had a go. Real good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were they were uh, they were surprised to see. Chris and Victoria there. Oh, you didn't tell them? No. <laughs> I kept it quiet. Oh, dear. <laughs> How'd it go? It went real well. Okay. We had uh, uh, one brother that has a couple of kids that are uh, have not heard anything about this. So it was... Uh, It was good to see them, see how they would react to it, you know, watch them and, and um, uh, just like all of us, they were, they were hit pretty hard, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. Once you see the, once you see the truth, it just, it, um, it sideswipes you or maybe even flips you on your head a little bit, but uh, no, it was good. It was real good. It was, it was, I enjoyed watching, uh, again, Chris and Victoria, uh, interact with people and, and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you, when you have people that have been doing this longer than you have, of course, or longer than anybody that you personally know doing this uh, all I can do is sit back and then and just absorb Definitely. how they're reacting and you know yeah mm. so it was I enjoyed it tremendously yeah so you're inspired yeah yeah oh. yeah wonderful fantastic so you uh, you got another meeting this week, or? As far as I know, it'll be the uh, it'll be uh, the first day of next week. Okay, so Chris and Victoria won't be there for that. No, no. Yeah, uh, I may not be there for that. Jennifer may be. Uh, of course. Yeah. Mm. Which uh, we're all. We're all uh, excited to to see the new addition. Yeah, yeah. Everything will be pink now, but uh, yeah, instead of blue. <laughs> oh, you haven't got any girls, have you? No. Wow. And so you know it's definitely a girl. Yes. Oh well, that's great. Wow. Yeah, we we've never uh, let ourselves be surprised. In that uh, yeah. fact, it's all right. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know it takes some of the excitement out of it, but hmm. that's fine. So, what was your meeting about? What was the theme? What went down? Give me all the goss. I want the juicy goss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 
the typical typical meeting goes goes um, um, goes through the through the realm of of the differences between the names, um, what we perceive to be truth, and what really truth is. You know, and and then a lot of uh, what Lou has brought forth uh, is brought to the forefront, and you get to see the differences. You know, um, from from what we perceive as just simply uh, everyday ordinary stuff to what Scripture actually says it is. Mm. You know, and and the weight and the uh, the impact of that. And then it goes back to um, um, truly what he's asking of us, what uh, he has he has given us, what he has uh, what he he is telling us we need to be doing, you know. And that's the uh, it last last night it lasted um, about four hours. Wow. Yeah. And who led the meeting? That would have been uh, LDC. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, I don't... Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, so he had... What you were saying then was what he spoke on the, the whole night, or was that yeah. the introduction? That was, that was the entire night. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, um, it's very good. Mm. Yeah. Oh, great. He asked, he asked me, he says, you're not, he, Larry says, you're not saying much. I said, well, i just sitting back and enjoying it. Yeah. You know, you, hit, you have two new guys there, and then um, then you have two, uh, a brother and sister there that's new to it. And I'm just absorbing it all. You know, I unless unless Yahusha actually wants me to to speak, then I just sit back and, and watch the reactions and uh, observe everything. Mm. Oh, come on! You don't put your hand up and try and answer all the questions. <laughs> I have all the answers. <laughs> You've got all the answers. <laughs> I don't have all the answers. Oh, I see. Yeah. Did you? Oh, that's fine then. Great. So, so what do you want to chat about tonight, brother? Well, you mentioned something about Passover. Yeah. And it's coming up, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. Yeah. What's on your mind? Well, I, I had some scriptures um, laid out. Mm. So, if you don't mind going through that, I was going to, um, what was uh, laid upon my heart was to take it maybe in a different direction that um, that is maybe overlooked a little bit. Um, so, if we can do that if you want. Yeah, go for it. Okay.
So you want to associate the uh, the seed in the garden, the good, the good seed and the bad seed that was in the garden, with the seed with the seed in the bread and the cup. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, we see that in the garden when um, when he created us, we were in his image. Well, that that image, Yahuwah is spirit. So if we were created in His image, we would have been in my in the understanding that I that I have, we would have been in that image of His Shekinah or the Torah. Hmm. There would have been because He is Spirit, and when He gave us His Torah, He gave us His heart hmm. to know His desire. Hmm. So that's the image that we would have been created in at the beginning, but then his understanding and through how he sees all things he knew we would fail him and he planted a tree of the knowledge of good and evil so in knowing that we would fail him or sin he went ahead and in that tree gave the knowledge of good but it was a more it was a less less of a good than than what we originally had so he still provided a way even though we broke his command mm. not the there was still good there but it wasn't the good he was desiring it was a, it wasn't the purity of it which only comes from him it wasn't the fullness of it that which only, you know it only comes from him so with with that, then we, then you, as you can, as you read through Scripture, you see the continuance of His love for us in in the fact that after we was cast out of the garden, He He offered that that goat skin as coverings. But uh, you, see, you see the uh, so again we have the the pure seed and then. The sacrifice, it, you know, the life and the blood being brought forth as a covering for us. Uh, so very early on, we see a, a, an outline of Passover in Scripture. And then, of course, um, um, you get the two offerings of, of uh, what is it, Quan or Cain and uh Abel, or how do you say say the Hebrew term? Abel. Yeah. You see the two offerings, one of one of blood and then one of, or of animal sacrifice, and then one of grain. But the grain, the 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 grain was he didn't bring the first fruits of the grain to Yahuwah, as as did. You know, Abel did bring the first fruit of the firstborn of the livestock, so it was it was good. Um, so again, you see that that um, that comparison between the, you know the cup and the and the and the the pure bread being brought, and um, and then Abraham. Or Abram to offer up his son that was asked of him, but again, Yahuwah provided that offering that was that he was desiring. He went ahead and provided uh, the way for Abram to uh, to keep his son. Hmm. You know, uh, it's a uh, Passover should be kind of, should be very personal. Should be very personal. Um, yeah. To look at it through the purity of Yahuwah offering His Son for for you. Um, we both have children. I, I, I don't think I could even take myself to that point, 
even as even as Abraham was asked. Yeah. You know, it's um, that's all. It's full on to think of how much belief he had, and he he knew Yahuwah, but he didn't have. He didn't have like Yahusha inside him like we do. Um, right. It was more of an outward influence, um, and he still had that much trust and belief that he was going to kill his own son. Right. Right. And like you said, yeah, that that'd be, you know, we wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> It'd be unheard of. That's really interesting what you're saying because a few days ago Lou touched on a lot of those things. He reckons Cain and Abel were probably celebrating Passover. <laughs> Well, so you hit yeah, the nail on the head. You hear it doesn't change. No. Hmm. And if so, if the Torah is his heart, like you were saying, then then even before it was laid down in a ten point law, uh, you know, a set of instructions, it would have been there from the beginning. Absolutely. Common knowledge. It's his heart. Yeah. That's that's. Yeah, as, as he sees, we don't see, of course. But uh, he, he laid it all out. He had it out. He had it all thought out. He had it before it even got started. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely amazing. But it's. <laughs> It gets back to, like you were saying with Abraham, though, it gets back to a belief. You know, the pure heart, the, the, the belief in in uh, the promise that we read in Jeremiah or Yermiyahu. Uh, just as Abraham had that belief, you know, it, it you take him at his word and that... You, you trust in that. You trust him uh, that he will keep his word, and he 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 will keep his word. He has kept his word. You know, it's it's um, that's what was that was that is what was so frustrating about um, Christianity was you could sit there and read the scripture and doing why aren't we doing what the scripture is telling us to be doing yeah what is what why are we different than what we are reading look at the footnotes it'll explain we were, it <laughs> uh? look at the footnotes it'll explain it <laughs> no they never explain it I never got explanation from the footnotes. That's it even made it even worse. Yeah. yeah. You know, but the people in charge would sit there and try to explain it to you. Oh, okay. You know, it's that does yeah. That don't explain it, but okay. I'll take your word for it. You know, but it it is it is it is about belief, and it is about receiving that pure, the pure sacrifice, uh, in the cup, uh, the the shedding of his blood, the 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 pure seed, of his body, the the um, the unleavened bread. You know, and I think it's. Uh, I was talking to Chris about this, and do we sow, what seeds are we sowing? The, to me, the work, the, the hard tilling, and, and, and the sowing of um, who he is, the pure seed, that is Torah, that was done by him. And now scripture speaks of a sowing 
but it's sowing in righteousness. So once we come to him, we, we no longer have to, um, um, it's all been laid before us. The seeds have been sown already. But when we have come to him, when people have talked to us, they have talked to us in his right ruling, in his righteousness. And those seeds bring um, further watering and, and further uh, light to the seed that has already been planted within us. And it, people sow those seeds of righteousness that sprouts uh, again that seed that's already been planted within us and it brings forth the harvest that 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 is coming you know and and it's just the work's been done um, now we are we are workers to bring the harvest in and that's uh To be able to just to freely walk in and plant seeds of righteousness, that is uh, that should be a freedom in and of itself to know that because it's all been laid before us. Hmm. How do you, you plant know? seeds? Huh? How do you plant those seeds? By speaking. Speaking, uh, uh, speaking Yahusha to them, to people, uh, by in your um, in your actions, you know, yeah. as we've as as Chris has talked, uh, actions as you're out and about, actions with your own family, uh, letting them have it. Um, It's, it's, it, I'm sure the, the work was, as we can read, uh, the work was much different back then. It was, it was, it was building off that foundation that was being laid or that was already, you know, that was being laid in Yahusha. Um, we reap um, because of that foundation. We reap that that righteousness. We're we're able to walk in it and 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 just to um, stay obedient in it, and then to enjoy the fruits of that righteousness. And as as um, um, Second, let me go to uh, Second Corinthians and share that one. And he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food shall supply and increase the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. So it's a constant uh, sowing and reaping. And if we are sowing and reaping in righteousness, then then that then that fruit's going to abound. And again, that that all comes through Yahushua though, not in and of ourselves. 10.12 says, for sow for yourselves righteousness and reap according to kindness. Break up your tillable ground. It is time to seek Yahua till he comes and rains righteous, righteousness on you. So that's, that's, that's speaking more to the, to the aspect of Yahushua uh, uh, coming to us and preparing the way, um, as it as it says in in Malachi that uh, I like this chapter Malachi three, three and four. That's they're they're tremendous. But it, uh, so we just read in Hosea that we are to prepare the ground tillable ground. And he said, he starts off, see, I am sending my messenger. He shall prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the master you are seeking comes to his heckle. 
Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, see he is coming, said Yahuwah of hosts. Well, that's, that's Yahuwah himself. That's Yahusha. That's, he's coming. Yeah. He's coming again. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, as, as we're talking about the, um, the, um, the sacrifices, the cup and, and the bread, and the purity of it. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to kind of read through chapter 3 of Malachi. Okay? It, it goes in to talk about the tithe, which is, which is very interesting. And he who is able to bear the day of his coming, and who is able to stand when he appears... For he is like the fire of a refiner, and like soap of a launderer. And he, Chris has been teaching us how to pronounce words properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, give me an example. <laughs> uh, we say farmland here. He says it's not farmland, it's farmland. <laughs> Farm. He's <laughs> <laughs> a riot. Man. Well, let me, let me continue. And he who is able to bear the day of his coming, and who is able to stand when he appears, for he is like the fire of a refiner, and like the soap of a launderer. And he shall sit as a refiner and a cleanser of silver, and he shall cleanse the sons of Louis and refine them as gold and silver, and they shall belong to Yahuwah, bringing near an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Yehuda and Yerushalayim be pleasant to Yahuwah, as in the days of old, as in former years. And I shall draw near to you for right ruling, and I shall be swift be, and I shall be a swift witness against the practicers of witchcraft and against adulterers, and against them that swear to falsehood, and against those who oppress the wage earner in his wages, and widows and the fatherless. Those who turn, turn away a sojourner and do not fear me, said Yahuwah of a host. For I am Yahuwah, I shall not change. There you go. He does not change at all. And that's wonderful. And you, sons of Yaakov, shall not come to an end. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my laws and do not guard them. Turn back to me, and I shall turn back to you, said Yahuwah of hosts. But you said, In what shall we turn back? Would a man rob Elohim? Yet you are robbing me. But you said, In what have we robbed you? In the tithe and the offering. This is interesting. In the tithe and the offering. You have cursed me with a curse, for you are robbing me, this, all of it. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, and let the, there be food in my house. And please prove me in this, said Yahuwah of hosts, whether I do not open for you the windows of the heavens, and shall pour out for you boundless blessing. And I shall rebuke the devourer for you, so that it does not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor does it, nor does the vine, to bear fruit for you in the field," said Yahuwah of Hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a land of delight," said Yahuwah of Hosts. Your words have been harsh against me," said Yahuwah. But you have said, "What have we spoken against you?" You have said, "It is worthless to serve Elohim." And what did we gain when we guarded His charge, and when we walked? As mourners before Yahuwah of hosts. And now you are calling the proud blessed. Not only are the doers of wrongness built up, but they are also try Elohim and escape. Then shall those who fear Yahuwah speak to one another, as we're doing now. And Yahuwah listen and hear, and a book of remembrance be written before him of those who fear Yahuwah and those who think upon his name. And they shall be mine, said Yahuwah of hosts, on the day that I prepare a treasured possession, 
and I shall spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again see the difference between the righteous and the wrong, between the ones who serve Elohim and the ones who does not serve him. So if we look at that, the tithe and the offering, you know, many think it's about, uh, well, the Christians think it's about money. But then we know we've come to understand that it's, it's about, originally it was about food. So it should be in the storehouse. But if we take it to the spiritual side of things, if our older brother was to be giving the bread of life, teaching people the bread of life, that is Yahushua, that is the Torah, but they were not. Well, as we come to Yahushua, we take a, we eat that that bread of life, and then in return uh, we give. We give out, we speak out, and we share with others that bread of life. We have become a spiritual offering. Mm -hmm. With our lips, we, are, we speak, uh, we give offering and tithes through the spiritual sense, with our, with our mouth, with our voice, to Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's been lacking from his people. That's what he desires. Mm -hmm. So when we speak... We are we are bringing uh, that tithe, that offering unto him that he desires to hear from our lips, from our hearts, and and to bring. Um, we are storing up in ourselves that bread of life. We are that storehouse of that 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 pure undefiled grain, you know, that brings the bread. Mm. Never looked at the tithe like that before. <clears throat> it's really interesting. Yes, it is. It's the, the bread of life. Yeah, and as a, as the storehouse, you know. Mm. Wow. Yeah, well, he's the bread, isn't he? He's the unleavened bread. <laughs> yeah, no leaven there. No, not at all. Hmm. It's all inter intertwined and connected, isn't it? Yahushua's all through the, the scripture. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. From the very beginning. Hmm. From, um, from when we were first created. Hmm. So how do you um, how do you come into Passover? What's your mindset regarding Passover? Do you um, I mean, obviously we teach the way we teach our family and our children is we just depending on their age we say certain words that they'll remember or do certain practices or you know whether you throw wine at your door or doorposts or whether you roast a lamb or things like that. But personally, what uh, how do you What's your mindset when you come into Passover? Just you yourself. It's one of humility and um, wanting wanting to be that that servant. You know, it's um, trying to trying to show my 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 children. That same, that same attitude, that same uh, humility. Um, we do take take turns washing each each other's feet, um, and that that is that is. Um, you you can read about it and agree with it, but then to go ahead and, and do it yourself, that brings a whole new level to it. You know that, that teaches, and I don't. I, I don't know if it really. It may. It. I don't think it may teach the person receiving the service something, but the one doing it. That's. That's what teaching is. 
Mm-hmm. That's where you do the teaching. You know, it's 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 the mindset of of the understanding of letting them have it. Mm-hmm. That's the way I can I can um, speak about it. Yeah. yeah. And that's we done that for the first time last year, and, and uh, that is um, that is something that we'll continue to do. It's um, the idea of foot washing is kind of um, lost in today's world, isn't it? Because everybody's feet are relatively clean. But if you if you had a, you know, if you went to an yeah. establishment and you were waited on, you know, there's a waiter or they're waiting on you, or even if when you go to the door, someone takes your coat or something like that. There's always somebody who's there to serve, who people think is nobody and nothing. You know, they're not looking for any attention. Even if it's somebody who's just clearing the table after a meal, takes the dishes and is washing up, you can kind of see that Yusha is, you know, they're all arguing who's the best, and he's just going on with the, with the, you know, what needs to be done for the evening. And it just right. happened that, it just happened in that custom that they'd wash feet when they walked into the house. And so he just gets on with it, and they're all arguing about who's the best, and he just gets on with it. And uh, like, because the, normally there would be a servant to do that, right? Um, so it just kind of shows you just how far just, off we are. Well, it's. I I think the most eye-opening aspect is we allow him to use us. If we're, if we're freely allowing him to use us, it, it's not about us. Mm. You know, it's, it's about, I'd much rather um, see, <laughs> if it was possible, I'd much rather stand back and, and see him use me, mm. but, but see him do it, you know. But it's got to be, it's got to be a, a one-on-one reaction. So we're not able to see that ourselves, except through the through uh, uh, the righteousness that that comes forth from it. But yet again, it's not it's not uh, for me. It's not even so much about that. It's just it, it's about enjoying everything that, that's about Yahusha. It's it's not about me. You know. Um, it is just how can you not enjoy this? How can you not? How can you not want it? Want to uh, just have a taste of it? Grab, grab, and grab that cup and just, just taste it. And if it, if it's good to you, then don't go back to the old stuff. Keep drinking. Keep eating the the new stuff. And by drinking, you're referring to doctrines. Yes. Personal mindsets, personal, you know. Don't, don't continue. Uh, allow him to flush that, to cleanse you, to, to, to render your heart. As Chris would say, flogging. Well, I find that not many people want to speak it like that. They want to say it in really polite terminology or uh, that's discipline or that's, you know. When, when you got something whipping you <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're in agony, you know, it's, it's, you've got to say it as it is. It's a flogging, mate. Plus the scripture says that. So yeah. it's, um, we were really glad to come across those scriptures years ago. Because you realize that um, when you're used to having a teacher and the teacher tells you what to do and your relationships with that teacher and you might be disobedient and you get angry at the teacher and there's this thing going on with the teacher, um, you realize that when Yahusha comes into you, you keep getting angry at, at the teacher, or at your wife or at your husband. Or, you keep getting angry, but you realize 
it's nobody around you that's causing your feeling. It's no. Yahusha inside you. Because you still got the feeling when you walk away and go home or when you walk into a room by yourself, the feeling's still there. How can it be them yeah. when they're not there anymore? You know? right. <laughs> Chris used to say, I haven't got any magic powers, Mark. Look. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, you know, you can't, you, can't make, you can't make somebody feel... I mean, you can even walk up to someone and slap them in the face. But you right. still can't, unless they choose to judge you for it, you can't make somebody feel anything. Right. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's really a flogging. And... Yeah. Depending on the, the, well, sin is sin, but there's various levels of depth of depravity that people have in their hearts. And I, I believe the feeling and the flogging goes with it. And when you're coming out of the system, um, it's agony, you know. And you just get whipped and beaten and uh, people don't want to face that. You know, who's just love? He's their father. Yeah. They can do no wrong. It's not. It's not right. You know, and that's why yeah. that you got to. If if you despise the discipline, you're a bastard. You know, because yeah. he who I love, I chasten, I, I treat as a son. You know, yeah. So that you bring forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And yeah. it's um, that's the whole point. Right. So, I, so we know now that every single person who's coming into Israel who gets immersed and we know every single person's got to go through that, that same process. I would, I would say to, the, to that, if you're not asking to be flogged or asking to be disciplined, mm -hmm. then you're not, you're not giving, giving your heart to him. I, I, why would you want to sit there and and take your time at this? At, at you know, at what is necessary to to, to get you purified? Yeah, yeah. yeah. To Not get nice. you step. To get you walking. Yeah. You know, you can't do this on your own. No. You know, why wait? Hmm. Yeah. I, 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 th I find it amazing coming to receive the, the name. How, how long was it for you before you were immersed after you received the name? Um, well, it wouldn't have been long. We all got immersed together. It wouldn't have been long. Because like I said last time, we got immersed in we got immersed twice, so one in right. Yeshua and the next one in Yahushua. We didn't bother with Yeshua with Yahusha. We just took it on. Right. That's that's the way it was. I I'm, I'm wondering if that's the way it is for for everybody. Hmm. Because that's hmm. for us in the sense that after receiving the name. And then, kind of studying out immersion. I mean, cause you you just you get the name and it's just it, it just full on, you know. And you're like, oh yeah, immersion, immersion. Yeah. Well, you know, it's almost is it you're, you're forgetting a step here. You know, uh, scripture's telling you to do. <laughs> and that's well, we can't. Yeah, you can. But it was it was probably um, six eight months. I mean, we you know we as a group we sat down we three or four of us um, sat down as a group and we studied the merchant out and you know and then we went ahead on it. So, but I think it's. I wonder why we wait. Yeah. Well, you know yourself, you, there's a, it's a huge process, particularly when you're told that most of the stuff you've learned is a lie. Um, it's a big, big, it's just agony, it's a turmoil when you're coming out. 
that's why people kind of need you know take hands off and let them but once the seed's been sown they kind of it needs time to grow you know yeah. you can't go in there yeah. what do you think what do you think you know are you coming along are you what yeah you can't go you're gonna get immersed you're gonna get immersed yeah. you can't you just gotta sort of let leave it to you know to grow uh, yeah. and i just can't Hello. believe even now still i can't believe the state of and you'd understand because i can like i I can feel you can feel the spirit in somebody by the words and the behaviour they have, and like mm-hmm. I can feel with like with you, we're on the same page. You know, you don't want to hurt people, you don't want to judge anybody, you don't want to. You just want to, you know, particularly when you come across a brother or a sister, you're just like, oh, fantastic, because there's so little, there's so few of us, and mm-hmm. but so many believers don't feel like that. There's so much politics. And you know, I can't believe it. Just just surfing for music this week for the radio thing, found s- such beautiful music out there. And then I download some of it, and one of the guys at the end of his set of music on his YouTube thing had this thing about it's all about Yahushua. Where did this Where did this modern Yahusha pronunciation come from? Well, it comes from this man here, <laughs> and it's Lou. <laughs> This man works in this shop. This man has a, a show on called Torah Talk. This man, this man, this man, this man. Oh, I just clicked it off. I just thought that's just so disappointing because I thought the music was just so beautiful. And I thought, you know, whether you agree with somebody or not, that's your prerogative. But, you know, come on, get over it. Get a life. Why would you put stuff out there against someone else? You know, it's... So that's... I just had to face very early on that there's, you know, uh, how's it go? Few, many are called, few are chosen. Um, I don't say that arrogantly, I hope I'm chosen, but it's like, it's, I guess uh, people don't feel like we're feeling, because it's all about the love. That's what it's about. When you come together, it's all about the love, and you know, you know, when you, See Christian Victoria when you see Lou and Phil, you just want to have the love. It's like well, we don't, you know, belief is important, but you know, it's just about you looking in each other's eyes. You love each other. Yahushua's love is there. You know, yeah. we don't want to talk yeah. about com- we don't want to talk about complicated doctrines. You know, yeah, this might yeah. Be, might be a time and place for that, but you know, yeah, I, I don't see the complicated doctrine because it's not in scripture. No. No. Has been. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's just, yeah, yeah, it is sad and it's disappointing because it, it surprises me still, the state of the Messianic movement and Nazarim. And now I thought, I used to think, well, yeah, well, they don't have the correct name, but they have the name. They have Yahusha's name. They're calling on Yahusha, Yahua, you know. They're saying the right, and they still are bickering with one another, and you're just like, wow. Yeah. But only Yahushua can wake people up, so there's no point getting upset about it. As, as I shared with, with Chris, Yahushua has um, I've asked for that blogging. I ask for that flogging every day. Mm. That is not not. I'm not saying that as as um, as a sense of self. It's because of self that I ask for it. Yeah. And and I appreciate it and I enjoy it. And that now that that too may sound a little. Too, like too much, but it's it's not that because of the of, because of his flogging. You change. Yeah, you, your heart changes. Your there is you don't you don't want no more of self. You you want more of him. Mm-hmm. You want you want that just that constant. Constant, constant contact with him. 
And it's even even in talking to people, you don't talk to people like you would normally anymore. You you got that flowing and it's just I just want to talk. You know? I don't care if it's what it's about, even if it's about Yahusha, I'm just talking to you about Yahusha. I'm not judging you. What I'm saying though is is a sword, and it, it what I got to understand it is a sword. It's it, it it may cut. How deep it cuts, that depends on how hard or how far Yahushua wants to throw that that sword. It's it's his it's his sword. He he cuts the bone and the marrow and the and the the inner spirit. The the, the you know. But to, but that's where us we've got to we've got to understand that and know that and then and, and just kind of like you were saying, don't keep trying to throw that, throw it deeper and deeper because that's just. But I what I've noticed in coming to Yahusha, it doesn't matter if it just maybe a surface scratch. Some people can't even handle that. And it's and it's like, you know, I've talked to people and and I've looked at my wife and I'm saying and I said I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. I don't know how to be any more gentle than I than I'm being. But it, it just it's so sharp and it and it cuts so deep. At times, it's like I I'm not judging you. I'm just I'm just sharing <laughs> I'm sharing truth with you. But this is, this is who he is. This is not, this is not, this is not make believe. This is not make it. You make it believe what you want to believe. I mean, that's 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 what I got from walking in the circus. And I wasn't pretending. Just wasn't good at making, trying to pretend that it bothered me severely. Mm -hmm. The only time I could actually go along and and have um, some peace in the circus was just simply reading his word. Even though I had the wrong names, it was still his bread. It was still his 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 truths. And it still brings forth light, and it still brings forth truth, and you get a lot of knowledge from it. But to have that that work that 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 seed that he, that he has done it, to start growing, you, you you haven't you haven't come to the author who wrote it, and you and you won't you won't see that fruit. And you won't receive the, the bounty of, of those seeds of righteousness to be to be sharing, to be planting as well. You gotta come to the author. You gotta come to the as it as it says in John, the vine, Yahuwah is the gardener. You gotta come to the you know, Yahusha is Yahuwah. You've gotta come to the to the true vine. You've gotta come to the gardener. One who planted that seed. Amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Colin said something pretty amazing last night. He said everything that I was searching for in in the circus and Christianity regarding, you know, the the crucifixion or the E A S T uh, everything I was looking for in that time, all the fulfillment, all the satisfaction, the emotion, everything I was searching for, I found the first time they practiced Passover. He said it much better. But, uh, you know, I, I hadn't thought it like that because it's true. We're trying to understand and feel Yahusha and you know, you've got to 
hardly even taste of it when you're in Christianity. There's just so many hoops you've got to jump through and uh, you never get to the end of it. You never get to the point where you're free. You never, you never see the glory fall. You know, you, you never, <laughs> as they put it, you know, you never get there. And uh, so, and, and he was saying, you know, the first time they did Passover, it was just so beautiful for them because they, they had all the fulfillment. They had the right scriptures. They had the, the right name. They knew the Father. They knew Yahushua, the sacrifice. The, and it all came together, what he had did and all the fulfillment. And Yeah. It's a beautiful time. Hideous yep. and sad, but you can rejoice in what he did for us. It reminds us, one, well, reminds us once again just how hideous we are. And we understand that um, coming into the unleavened bread, there's going to be a lot of arguments because uh, he's cleaning us out. So you tend to have little tiffs and strifes and arguments and things, and then you look at it and go, oh, who's just cleaning us out? You know, he's doing it all the time, but around that time of the year, we notice it more. Yeah. It's like he's shining a light on stuff, he's onto stuff. Like they're, when they're looking for the leaven, looking for the leaven, get rid of it, sweeping out all the leaven. Right. Make sure there's none in the house. So. Yeah, that's 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 enjoyable doing that as well. <laughs> yeah. Act, acting out your belief, hmm. taking part in it, you know, as as well as the other stuff, but to have the high high days and and hey, I'm doing what's actually written in scripture now. I should have been doing this all along. But getting back to what what you and Colin are talking about, you know, I always struggled in the fact of in the circus. I always had that question, that that small question in the back of my mind: Am I am I saved or not? Do I know? I never I never had the pure spiritual milk given to me. You know, that's that's the that's the that's the bottle stuff. The the pure spiritual milk is deliverance, as as, as it's written. Well, I never tasted it until I came to Yahusha. Yeah. yeah. Once I tasted it, I was. Oh, I I just needed to taste it. <laughs> it's time to put the ball down. Yeah. That's all I needed. You're an addict. <laughs> Bring on the steak. Yeah. Bring on the three course meal. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm hungry. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's. But that's. I mean, that's that too, though. Uh, you know, that's all we got to share, though, is that pure. That pure spiritual milk, you know, because they're desire. People are desiring that, just the, the spiritual milk of it all. They're they're no different than us. We have just like I never heard it before until come until. Um, all I all I needed all I needed was was to hear was the name. That's it. I didn't need to hear nothing else. You know, it, it, I know everybody's different in, in that in that sense. Some people need to hear more of the the gut wrenching stuff, but you know, all it took was you know. Wonderful. Uh, it, yeah, it is. Well, that's lovely, mate. Some really good understanding there coming into Passover. I'm sure we've helped a lot of people. So. I, I hope I, I hope I wasn't too nervous in the beginning. That's I was fine. trying to, you know, if you if you read uh, John chapter 15, that that goes into a lot of explanation as well. Uh, being the true vine that he is, you know, and and. You know, I, I, I contend that, that, that the, 
the work on, on the stake was putting the Torah in in into human hearts. You know, that's and and um, as it's written, we are all mankind are, is is under sin now because because of his offering. If if he's going, you know, I I guess I look at it this way: if he's going to, um, and that's tell us that we are sinning. Sin is lawlessness. If we've never been giving given something to break, then how can we be declared guilty? Of breaking it. So that's, you know, his work is just, is justified yeah. because of his love for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's either, way, either way, it's justified. Either you. You you take that that flogging that you deserve, <laughs> or you just go about your business, and you will again re receive justice. Yeah, he, I absolutely, I absolutely love him. Hmm. Me too. Hmm. I couldn't tell. <laughs> 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 oh no, I'll get there. <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been lovely chatting with you, mate. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think we're seeing Chris and Victoria today, so. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, uh, I will give him my love. Take care, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll be in touch, mate. Okay. Sounds good. Love you, mate. Love you, too. See you later.